Hey guys, in this video, let us learn about MongoDB. If you want to learn MongoDB from the scratch, from the basics, then you are in the right place. These are the topics that we will discuss now. First, let us get an understanding about NoSQL. We will see what are the different models of NoSQL databases. Then move on to get an introduction to MongoDB. How to install and do the environment setup for working with MongoDB. We will also learn to perform certain CRUD operations using MongoDB. To start with, let us understand what is NoSQL. NoSQL means not only structured query language. NoSQL databases doesn't store data in the form of tables. You all know that in RDBMS, we store data in the form of tables. NoSQL databases use different models for storing the data. The data can be stored in the form of document, RS column, RS key value pair, RS graphs. Based on the storage type, NoSQL databases are categorized as column oriented database, document oriented database, key value store and graph. Example for column oriented databases HBase and Cassandra. Example for document oriented databases Couchbase and MongoDB. MongoDB is what we are going to learn now. Example for key value store is Memcached and Redis. Example for graph is Infinite Graph and Neo4j. One more thing about NoSQL databases is they don't use SQL as the query language. That is why it is NoSQL, not only structured query language. NoSQL does not require a schema to work with their databases. This is just a basic introduction about NoSQL. We have already seen few examples of NoSQL databases, MongoDB, Couchbase, HBase, Cassandra. Now, let us get an introduction to MongoDB. MongoDB comes under document oriented database. Here the data is stored in the form of documents. Each document is called as a record. The document stores the data as a key value pair. If you compare this with our normal RDBMS database, in case of RDBMS, you have the term coined as database. In MongoDB also, it is called as database. In RDBMS, database is a collection of tables. In MongoDB, database is a collection of collections. Collections is synonymous to table in RDBMS. In one table, you have multiple rows. Each row is called as a record. In case of MongoDB, in one collection you have document. Each document is called as a record. Each document has a field value pair. This is a simple example of one document in MongoDB, where employee ID, first name, last name, age, salary are fields, and SM1, Ritu, Kumar, 22, 10,000 are the appropriate values. If you are comparing this with RDBMS, this employee ID, first name, last name, age, salary will be columns. Few other differences between RDBMS and MongoDB is, RDBMS works only with structured data, MongoDB can work with semi-structured data. In RDBMS, a proper schema is required. In case of MongoDB, you can either work with schema or without schema. And what is common between RDBMS and MongoDB? Indexing is possible in RDBMS and also in MongoDB databases. You can perform all the CRUD operation using RDBMS and MongoDB. And also aggregation is possible in RDBMS and MongoDB. There are also few other advanced concepts in MongoDB like sharding and replication. That is out of scope for this particular video. We will not be discussing that here. Let us now learn how to install MongoDB and do the environment setup for working with MongoDB. Let me type download MongoDB. I am selecting the second search MongoDB community download. We will be working with MongoDB version 3.6.22. Choose your platform. For me it is Windows, package MSI, click download. Run the installer. Click next. Next, 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 go with the defaults and install MongoDB. I have already installed MongoDB. My version is 3.6.21. That is why it is asking me whether I want to change, repair or remove. I don't want to do anything. So let me just click cancel. 
what actually we have done is we are just installing the server and the client for working with mongodb if you compare this with rdbms in case of rdbms when you are installing mysql first mysql server will be installed then an instance of mysql server will be created and it will start running that is mysql server will be running as a service and if you want to work with mysql you go to the mysql command line and you will be working with that similarly in case of oracle also you will be installing oracle server which will run automatically in the background you will be just opening mysql plus and working with the oracle commands in case of mongodb the mongodb server is not running as a service so explicitly you need to run the server and the client the first step is if we want to run mongodb from command line we need to do the environment setup so let me go to edit edit system environment variables environment variables select path click edit click new now you need to know where mongodb is installed so let me go to c drive program files mongodb server 3.6 you need to copy the whole path come back here and click new and paste it here already i have added the path of mongodb so let me just remove this for few people you will not be getting a dialog box like this rather you will be getting a different dialog box like this in this scenario whatever you are having don't delete it put a semicolon after that paste the path whatever you have selected i will repeat if you are getting a dialog box in this manner don't remove anything instead put a semicolon after that paste the path whatever you have copied or paste the text whatever you have copied click okay once you have done this open the first command prompt now let us check what is the version of mongodb mongo space double hyphen version enter you should get this message if you are getting a message as mongo is not recognized as an internal or external command then it means that the path that you have set is wrong so again you have to go check the path add it properly open a new command prompt check it again this is the process that you need to follow okay fine now what is the next step i need to run the server for running the server the command is play mongo d now the server has started but for you when you are running it you will be getting an error if you op go to the top where the command has started you will be getting mongodb starting port number is 27017 but still it will be expecting a folder as c drive data slash db if you don't have this folder your mongodb server will not run if you see in the console it will automatically terminate for me already i have added the folder data slash db inside c drive for you because you have just installed you are not having this particular folder means automatically the server will shut down so what you need to do is go to the c drive create a folder with the name data all in lower case inside data create a folder as db again lower case already i have created all the relevant data of mongodb is getting stored over here so let us forget about this just for your understanding let me repeat the points the first thing is we need to install mongodb next do the environment setup then create a folder data slash db inside c drive it should be something like c slash data slash db once this is done you need to open two command prompts open cmd start mongodb start the server as mongodb next again open another command prompt start the client as just mongo this is your mongo shell as long as you are going to work in your mongo shell the server should be running continuously this is the information that you need to remember now my server is running properly because i have already created the folder c drive data db now let me open another command prompt and type mongo now you can see that the mongo shell has started automatically it is showing me an angle bracket the moment it has started i am getting certain details in my server also 
connection 1 received client metadata from 127.0.0.1 meaning to say that local host and what is the connection mongodb internal client what is the version 3.6.21 the system version is windows name is microsoft 10 so all the details about my system is going to the server and it is capturing it right so the installation and setup is done next let us see how to create a database create collection and perform CRUD operations in MongoDB. Now let us see what is the command to see the list of databases in MongoDB. If it is MySQL, you write it as show databases ending it with a semicolon. Semicolon is not mandatory in MongoDB. Here the command is show space dbs. By default, the databases that you will get is admin config local. I have created these three databases PHPDB, training and trial. Okay, next let us see how to create a database. For creating a database, the command is use database name. Let me give the database name as samples. Now we have created the database. Let us check whether it is available in the list of databases. Show DBS. We have created a database with the name samples, but it is not shown in the list of databases. The reason being, when you are creating a database, it should have at least one collection, that is at least one table. Because we have not added any table or any collection to this particular database, the name, collection and table are synonymous, you can use both, but the right thing is to use always collection. So as I said, because you are not having even one single collection in the samples database, it is not shown in the list of databases. Now what I will do is, I will try to add one collection to the database. The command to create a collection is db dot create collection within bracket within single quotes the collection name employee. This is one way of creating a collection. One other way to create a collection is by inserting a document into a collection you can create a collection. Let me first go with this part. Okay. Usually in MySQL whenever you are creating a table first you will check whether you are there in that particular database. For that the command that you give is use space the database name. Already here we have given use space samples. But still I want to check what is the current database that I am working with. So the command is simply db. So we are now in samples. Now let us create a collection. So the command is db dot create collection within bracket single quotes or double quotes employee. Enter. Query ok value is 1. It means that this particular collection is created. Now again let us see the list of databases, show dbs. Now here you can see that the samples database also is added. Okay. This is one way of creating a collection. One other way of creating a collection is by inserting one document in the collection. So let us see how it can be done. The command for doing that is db dot give your collection name. Let me give the name as student dot I want to insert one document into the collection. So it is insert one. Insert one is a function. So it is case sensitive. You need to give I lowercase O uppercase within bracket within curly braces. In case of MongoDB, the data is saved in the form of BSON. This is a binary representation of JSON that is JavaScript object notation. So whenever you want to insert a document into a collection, you need to give it within curly braces. Within this curly braces only you will be giving field value pair. Now let me give the field and the corresponding value. The field is student id colon 1. Field is student id. The value is 1 comma name colon Raju. Okay. What are the data types that MongoDB supports when you are assigning values to the fields? MongoDB has many data types. Few among them are number, string, boolean value, array, an object itself as a data type and much more. We are not going into that now. In this case, we have used integer as data type for student id and string as data type for name. Let me give enter. Here we have got a JSON result. Let us understand it. Acknowledged true. It means that this particular document is added to the student collection. Inserted ID. What exactly it is? It represents the primary key of this particular document. 
because we have not specified any primary key MongoDB will automatically insert a primary key. The value of this primary key is a hexadecimal value and it is starting with object ID. You may ask me a question, already I have given the ID as student ID. MongoDB will not understand if you are giving your own na field names for the ID. The field name that MongoDB understands is underscore ID. Only if you are giving it as underscore ID, then MongoDB understands that, okay, fine, this is the primary key. I will accept this as a primary key. Let me explain it one other example. Here I have given db.student.insert1. Now, instead of student ID, let me give it as underscore ID. This underscore ID represents the primary key. So, MongoDB will automatically take this value as the primary key. Let me give a different name, enter. Now here you see, I am getting a JSON result, acknowledge true, inserted ID is 901. So you need to understand this, whenever you are inserting documents into MongoDB, if you are using underscore ID, MongoDB will take that as the primary key for that particular document. If you are not using any field as underscore ID, even though you are having a field with the name ID, MongoDB will not consider that. Instead, it will create a value as object ID and assign it to underscore ID field. That is what has happened for first student document. In case of student document 2, we ourselves have given underscore ID. So, MongoDB understood that, okay, they have given the primary key, I should not touch it. Fine. Now, again, let us check the list of databases. Show DBS. Samples is shown over here. Now I want to see the list of collection inside samples database. The command is show collections. Employee and student. Semicolon is not mandatory. Okay. Now we have inserted two documents in student collection. Similarly, we will try to insert one document in employee collection. In this case, let us try to use most of the data types in MongoDB. The command for inserting is db dot employee dot insert one round bracket curly braces within which I need to give the JSON data. Either you can write the whole command in single line or you can write it in multiple lines. Let me remove the ending curly brace and round bracket. Enter. Let me start with the underscore id colon 900 comma name colon yasmin comma salary colon 2000.9 that is decimal value comma hobbies for the hobbies field let me give the value as array everything should be in single quotes comma address in case of address i want to give another object itself wherein address has city and state city colon bangalore comma i can do it in single line or in multiple lines karnataka curly braces that's it. I have added fields underscore id, name, salary, hobbies and address. Id represents the primary key. You can give numerical value or string value. In case of name, we have used the data type as string. For salary, decimal value. For hobbies, array. For address, it is actually kind of a nested document. Okay. Address has city and state. Both of them are taking the data type as string. If you want to add zip code, of course you can add it. What is this three dots? It means that MongoDB understands you are still continuing with writing the commands and it will wait till you complete it. So that is why every line I am getting this dot dot dot. And even if for this curly braces if I press enter, again I will get this three dots. I can put a curly brace, round bracket, enter. Because we have closed it properly, automatically I am getting the final result. Acknowledge true, inserted ID is 900. Okay. In this case, we have inserted one document into the employee collection. Now, let us insert more than one document into the employee collection. The method is insert many. db dot employee dot insert many round bracket. Because we are going to insert more than one document, it is in the form of an array. Within which document 1 comma document 2 comma document 3 one more thing you understand 
MongoDB does not expect a proper schema. So it is not mandatory that you need to give all the fields whatever is there in the first document. If you see in the student collection also, for the first document we had student ID and name. For the second document we are having underscore ID and name. So it's up to you how you want to maintain your collection. But in a proper use case scenario, usually the collections follow a proper schema. Let me insert three documents. It's always better that you type it in an editor and paste it over here. Underscore ID 901. Let me add the data first. So this is my first document. For the second document, underscore ID colon 902. I have added all the three documents. Let me press enter. I have missed a code somewhere. Let me redo it again. Let me check it out. Uh, here is the error. Can you see after address I have given single quotes. Enter. Acknowledge true. Inserted IDs are 901, 902 and 903. So as I told, if you are going to insert one document, you can use the command line or you try to write the whole code in notepad and paste it over here. So this is how you insert more than one document into a collection. Okay, it is good to go. What if I want to see the list of documents that is there in a collection? In case of RDBMS, you write select star from employee. In case of MongoDB, the method is find. In RDBMS, they are called as SQL statements, structured query language statements. In MongoDB, all these are called as methods. Insert one, insert many, find, update, update one, update many, like that. Okay, let me just start with db dot employee dot find the equivalent sql query is select star from employee let me press enter so it is giving me the list of documents that is there in the employee table we added first 900 then we added 901 902 903 together okay but this doesn't look good what if i want to see it in a proper formatted manner so for that we can go in for db dot employee dot find dot pretty in this case what it will do it will give it in a proper json format let me press enter now you can see let me scroll up little it's coming in a proper json format can you see that id name salary hobbies so it is in a readable format so when you simply give db.employee.find it will give you the list of documents if you give db.employee.find.pretty it will give the documents in a formatted manner what if i want to limit the number of documents to 2 usually for pagination purpose we will limit the number of documents to 10 20 similarly if you want to limit the number of documents to a particular number the method is just limit and pass the number 2 enter now here I am getting only two documents. Okay. And what will happen instead of limit if I use skip. In case of limit, it will limit the documents by the number that you have given within parenthesis. In case of skip, it will skip the total number of documents that is given inside skip method. It will start from the first. So it will skip the first two documents and return the rest of the documents. Say for example, if I am having 20 documents means if I give limit as 2, the first two documents will be returned. If I give skip as 2, the first two documents will be omitted and I will get the remaining 18 documents. Enter. Now here you can see that. I am getting the remaining two documents. The first two documents are skipped and I am getting the remaining two documents. So find is used to retrieve the data from the collection. Okay. Let me clear the screen. The command is CLS because we are in command prompt only. Okay. What if I want to get the list of documents based on a particular criteria? Where class? Select star from employee. Where name equal to Raju. Where city equal to Bangalore. Where salary equal to 2000. So how to do that? I will just show you a few examples. TB dot employee dot find. Within the curly braces, I need to pass the criteria. Let me first start with a simple criteria. I want to get the list of employees where the name is equal to Akshay. Name colon Akshay. I am getting one document. Now I want to get the list of employees where the salary is 
greater than 3000. So in that case, I need to give db.employee.find within round bracket curly braces field is salary colon. I cannot use greater than or anything. Instead, I need to use MongoDB operators. For greater than, the operator is $GT. Whenever you are using an operator, again you need to call it within curly braces. So within curly braces, $GT colon, that is salary greater than 3000. Enter. Now let us cross check this. I will simply give a db.employee.find. So here I am having 4 employees. We are trying to get the list of employees where the salary is greater than 3000. So obviously I am having 2 employees whose salary is greater than 3000. What if I want to give salary less than 3000? So the command is LT. Let us check it out. Okay. What if I want to use greater than or equal to? Greater than or equal to 2000. Enter. Now you can see I am getting 3 documents. Okay, so this way there are many operators that are available in MongoDB. Greater than, greater than, equal to, less than, less than, equal to, equal to, not equal to, not in. So in those kind of operators also you can try with. Okay, now I want to get the list of employees where the city is Bangalore. Let me give the command. It is db.employee.find, round bracket, within curly braces. Can I give city colon Bangalore? I cannot. The reason being, this is a nested document. A document inside another document. So, the nested document name is address. In address, I am having the field as city and state. I need to call it using address.city colon Bangalore. There is a problem over here. When I give address.city, again you are having a dot operator. You cannot give directly like this. If you give in this manner, it will give you an error. So whenever you are using nested document, it should be within single quotes. First, let me show you the error. Okay. Now we will change it to address.city. Enter. Now here I am getting three documents. Okay. All these are similar to RDBMS only. What we have seen is select star from employee where name equals Akshay, select star from employee where salary is less than 3000, salary is greater than 5000, greater than equal to 2000. Okay. What about address.city? In case of address.city, if it is simply city, I can give select star from employee where city equal to Bangalore. But here we are using address.city. If it is RDBMS, address will be a separate table and city and state will be the columns in that table. When you want to get the list of employees who belong to Bangalore, you need to do a join so that you will be getting it. Or if there is a relationship between these two tables in form of primary key and foreign key, in that scenario also you can get the details. Okay. Now, what if I want to get the list of employees who is having the hobby as music? For that, db.employee.find hobbies colon music. Here you can see I have not used any square bracket. If you don't use any square bracket, it will go and search the array where the value is part of the array. In this case, we are getting three documents because all the three documents are having hobbies field and music is a part of this array. What if I want that my music should be the only element in the array? In that scenario, the command is db.employee.find hobbies colon within square bracket music. So here I am getting the list of the documents where the hobbies array is having only music as value. If you want the value to be a part of an array then give without square brackets. If you want to check for the whole array itself give with square brackets. This is how you query the collection in MongoDB. There are also many more ways of filtering the data and finding it out. For that, there are many operators available. Just like I told greater than, less than, greater than, equal to, in, not in, dollar exists to check whether that particular field is available in the document or not. Fine. One more also, let me just show you. Let me clear the screen. db.employee.find within curly braces. I want to check for the name and also for the city. Select star from employee where name equal to Akshay and city equal to Bangalore. 
In that case, just give name equal to Akshay, comma, within single quotes, address dot city, colon, Bangalore. Enter. The equivalent SQL statement is select star from employee where name equal to Akshay and city is Bangalore. If I change the city to Uti, I should not get any result. This is like AND. How to apply R? Now I want to get the list of documents where the name is Akshay or the city is Uti. For this, let us use the dollar $R operator. Dollar $R colon within square bracket first field value comma second field value. Check for name as Akshay or address dot city as Uti. Let me check for the curly braces also. Correct. Enter. In this case, I am getting two documents. Equal and SQL statement is select star from employee where name is Akshay or address dot city is OT. So, I hope it is clear. This is one filter operator. Similarly, there are many operators with which you can work in MongoDB. Now, let us see how to sort the documents in a collection. Sort by name, sort by salary, sort by hobbies. Similarly, here db.employee.find, the method is sort within which it takes a field and value. The field is the field with which you want to sort. I want to sort by name, colon, plus 1 or minus 1. Plus 1 is ascending order, minus 1 is descending order. Enter. Akshay, Helen, Raman, Yasmin. Now, same way, I can just give minus 1 also. Okay. So, these are the few ways in which you can query the collection in MongoDB. There are also many filters and operators available which you can apply inside find method to query your collection. Now, let us move on to the next one in our CRUD, update operation. So, the method is update one, update and update many. Let us see one by one. Let me clear the screen. Let us first do a find, db.employee.find. Let me start with update1, db.employee.update1. It takes three parameters. First, second, comma, third parameter. The first parameter is the filter. The second parameter is the data that you want to set. The third parameter is used for upsetting. We will see one by one. Now, I will remove this upset part. The first parameter is the filter. Let us take the filter as id. For underscore id colon 900, I want to change the salary. So, dollar set. This is again an operator. Dollar set colon within curly braces salary colon 5000. Enter. Here we have got the result. Acknowledge true. Match count is 1. The total number of documents that matched is 1 for based on the filter underscore id. Modified count is 1. Only one document is modified. That is the meaning. The equal and SQL statement is update employee set salary equal to 5000 where ID is 900. In case of ID 901, I am not having a field salary. What will happen if I try to update the salary field for document 901? In case of SQL, if you are trying to do that, you will get an error. But in case of MongoDB, first it will check for the ID. If the filter matches, then it will come for the dollar set part. First it will check if this particular field is available. If the field is available, the field will be updated. If the field is not available, then it will create a new field and add it to the existing document. Let us see that. Now I am going in for 901 dollar set salary as 8000. Enter. Acknowledge true, matched count is 1, modified count is 1. Now let us check that also, db.employee.find, for 900 salary is changed to 5000, for 901, what it has done is, it is checking for a field salary, the salary field is not available, so automatically it is adding one extra field salary and attaching the value 8000. So that is the difference between MySQL and MongoDB. Uh, RDBMS, if the field is not available, it will give you an error. But in case of MongoDB, if the field is not available, it will create a new field and add the value for that particular field. Okay, this is about the second parameter. What is the third parameter? The third parameter is absurd. What it will do is, it will check for the filter. If the filter is not available, nothing should change, right? So, say for example, if I give db.update1, 
909 set salary 8000 i don't have a field as 909 matched count is 0 modified count is 0 but if i try to give the same command together with the third parameter wherein i am giving absurd colon true in this case when you add the third parameter absurd as true first it will check for the filter we don't have a document with an id 909 because you have given absurd as true it will create a new document with an id 909 and set the field salary with the value 8000 Let me press enter. Acknowledge true. Match count is zero, meaning to say that there is no document with an ID nine zero nine. Modified count is zero. None of the documents were modified. Absurded ID. Earlier it was coming as inserted ID. Now here it is absurded ID. Values nine zero nine, meaning to say that a new document is inserted into this particular employee collection. Now let us check it. Check it out. DB dot employee dot find. you can see 909 salary 8000 is added so three things you need to remember whenever you are trying to update a document the first parameter is the filter the second parameter is dollar set in this case if there is no document with this particular id nothing will change but if there is a document with this particular id it will check whether there is a field with the name salary if there is a field with the name salary the value will be changed to 5000 but if there is no field with the name salary then it will add a new field as salary and assign the given value the next one is it is having the third parameter as absurd true if you give absurd true first mongodb will check for the filter if there is no document matching the filter it will check for the third parameter by default absurd is false if you have given explicitly absurd as true then it will understand that if there is no document with this particular id a new document has to be created and a field with the name salary should be added this is what has happened okay now the next thing is update many in case of update many we are going to update more than one document dollar underscore id i can give a criteria again curly braces i can use the operator dollar less than or equal to 902 so i am choosing 900 901 and 902 dollar set salary is 16000 and i don't want the third parameter enter acknowledge true match count is 3 modified count is 3 let us check the output id 916000 901 16000 902 is also 16000 okay it is update many what will happen for this if i give update 1 instead of giving update many if i use the command as update 1 and here i will change the salary to 6000 now let us see what is happening let me press enter i have put a wrong bracket let me just change it my round bracket got deleted that is why i am getting this error i will add it enter still i am having a problem I'll give a control C. So control C is to come out of that console, that particular thing. Okay. So now it is db dot db dot employee dot update one. Here I am having more than one document, but the method that I have used is update one. I am trying to change the salary to six thousand. Let us see what is happening. Enter. Matched count is one. Modified count is one. What is the meaning of it? because you have used update one only one document will be modified let us see the output also db dot employee dot find only the salary of the first document is getting changed okay so this is about update one and update many one more thing if you want to remove a particular field from a document then you can use the operator unset let me use the same update one which we have used earlier ID is nine zero zero dollar unset salary and I don't want the third parameter. Enter. Acknowledged true. Match count is one. Modified count is one. So if you want to add a field to an existing document, use dollar set. If you want to remove a field from an existing document, use dollar unset. Let us do a find. Salary field is removed from ID nine zero zero. 
So this is how you use update one and update many methods to update your documents in a collection. You can also apply filters in case of update op methods. Now the last part of our CRUD operation is delete. So the command is db dot employee dot delete one. Pass the filter underscore id colon nine zero nine. Enter. Acknowledge true. Deleted count is one. Let us check the employee collection again. db.employee.find yeah the last document is removed here also you are having a method as delete many so the command is db.employee.delete many id i cannot give the value directly within curly braces dollar less than colon 902 so 900 and 901 will be deleted deleted count is 2 let us check it out So we are having only final two documents. This is for delete operation. Now we have seen how to perform CRUD operations on a collection. Let us also see how to drop a collection, just like how you drop a table in RDBMS. This is the command to see the list of databases. This is the command to see in which database we are working. Now let us see the list of collections in this particular database. We are having employee and student. We have been working in employee. Now I want to drop the student collection. So the command is db dot collection name that is student dot drop. Just like how you use the SQL statement drop, here the method is drop. Now it is giving true. It means that the collection is removed from the database. If I try to give the command again, it will return false, meaning to say that there is no collection with the name student. Now again, let us give show show collections. the only collection that is available is employee okay we have seen all the basic operations that is needed to work with mongodb let me just give a heads on of whatever we have seen till now now let us now let me give a review of whatever we have learned till now first we got an intro to no sql then an overview of mongodb what are the terms that are used in mongodb like what is a database what is a collection what is a document uh what are field and values then we we'll install mongodb we did the environment setup by copying the path of mongodb till bin then we created a folder data/db inside c drive now you need to run the server and the client for running the server the command is mongodb you can run it from the command prompt again open another command prompt and you can run the client that is the mongo shell just give mongo then next is we got the list of databases by giving show dbs and then uh, if i want to to see what is the current database in which we are working the command is db then to use or create a particular database the command is use database name so we created a database with the name samples after that we wanted to create a collection there are two ways of creating collection the co method is db uh, sorry the command is db dot create collection create collection is the method This is one way. One other way is by inserting a document into a collection. You can create a collection in the database. So we gave the command as db dot collection name emp dot insert one. Within curly braces, we need to give the field value pair. So once the database is created, we created the collection. This is the first step of our CRUD operation. Then after that, we have to insert values. We saw how to insert one document and many document. while inserting we also learned what are the different data types that can be used for values like string integer then decimal then array then nested document also we also saw how to insert one document and insert many document once it is done then we learned how to query the database for querying the database the simple method is find to get it in a formatted manner we also learned how to use pretty then for limiting the document we use limit method also we learned how to use skip the difference between limit and skip is limit will give that many number of documents given as value skip will skip that many number of documents given as value after this we also learned to apply few filters just like how we use where class select star from employee where name equal to akshay select star from employee where name equal to akshay and city equal to bangalore and how to query if i am having an array how to query if i am having a nested document so we have seen all this once we have completed the querying of collection then we moved on to how to work with update so in update we have seen update one and update many 
In case of update 1 and update many, one thing you need to remember is it is having three parameters. First, it will check for the filter. If the document matches the filter, then it will go and check for the field. If the field is there, the field will be updated. If the field is not there, a new field will be created. And it will check for the third parameter also. If the filter doesn't match, if there is a third parameter with the value true, that is absurd as true, then it will create it as a new document. So this is for update one and update many. If you want to uh, remove a field from a particular document, you can use the operator dollar unset. So this is for update one and update many. The next one is delete operation. For deleting a document, the method is delete one. If you want to delete more than one document by applying a filter, you can use delete many. That's all. So we have seen very good number of examples for performing CRUD operations in MongoDB. There is also much more in MongoDB, like you can apply different kinds of filters in find method. There are different types of operators like logical query operators, element query operators, update operators, which helps you to narrow down the search in MongoDB. Also, you can perform projection and aggregation operation in MongoDB. I hope this is clear. Now, you can work comfortably in MongoDB to perform CRUD operations. That's it. Thank you.